microphone as well. Yeah. This is Richard. Hello. One of my. Uh, I don't know this guy. Who, who are you? Who are you? Very nice friend of mine. Can you move away from my boat, please? Well, there you go. He's made various threats against my life over the years, but still, I think, you know, you can't turn down a chance to go sailing with someone on such a lovely boat. Shame about the captain. Nasty, man. <laughs> The 432 Classic is only three foot longer than Summer Breeze, but pro proper headroom and feels huge by comparison. Well, bigger, not like huge. Amazing space. I mean, that cabin is beautiful. Obviously, this one is in incredible condition. I looked at one at Chichester and it was very tatty and horrible. And as much as I liked the boat, it just hadn't been looked after, whereas this has been cared for extremely well. How old is she, Richard? She is 21 years old. 21, but she just doesn't look it. She's no, in... Six months. Yes. I mean, actually, some boats look worse than this after six months. All the original furnishings in this DeFour um, colourway and style, which you see on a lot of DeFours, which is actually extremely nice. They do an inverted navy blue with, with sort of cream and white on it. This is really nice as well, because it, it just makes this saloon feel very bright. And the cabin forward is a really great size. That's much bigger than the cabin of Summer Breeze. And uh, I love this these wardrobes. There's one on both sides. They're a great size. These blinds are really clever as well. They just pop on their um, original. Summer Breeze has a half-sized chart table. This has actually got a half chart on it, but a full-size, it's a full-size chart table. A very good size heads. Richard likes his creature comforts. I've been in hotels with smaller bathrooms than that. And a full-size galley. Richard's never actually used, Richard's never used that oven because he's incredibly uh, lazy, eats sandwiches out of packets. She is a fantastic boat and I'm really looking forward to seeing how she sails. Um, if the captain can not be me too mean to me as well, that would be great. Can I do something to be useful? I can't one this is actually going to be a real test of characters because um, Richard and I... Clash. We don't clash. We clash. I think he's great. but. It's two skippers on one boat, and it's his boat, so he's in charge. So it's very difficult. We both got basically the same mooring as well, so and we both reverse out. So we both do exactly the same things, and how I do it is probably very different to how Richard does it. So do it he does it better, he says. So <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those things that you've got to learn from each other and respect each other, and he's in charge. But I've got to keep my mouth shut as well. <laughs> and he doesn't think I can. He's probably right. This boat sails lovely, Richard. It's got a lovely boat. Um, we are. Can you say that a bit louder, please? <laughs> we are having to jibe a bit to uh, to come downwind, but oh, and we've um, just yeah, we don't have a jibe preventer, so we're keeping that there because otherwise it would be a hazard. But she sails lovely. I mean, we're going. Well, we're going five knots earlier against the tides downwind, which is very nice. We're now, we're now going three and a bit knots. And uh, yeah, she sails, she sails lovely. She holds her line really nice. She's only got the little keel, hasn't she, Richard? Shoal keel. Shoal keel. How big is the keel? 1.3 meters. 1.3 meter draft. Yeah. Yeah, which is, which is great. So it's perfect for around here on the east coast. Um, massive Genoa. How big is that? 120? Huge. 130%? It's a big Genoa. I think it's 130. 130, yeah. It's a great boat. 
Ricky just needs to learn how to sail it. That's the well, that's that's lesson two. Tune in for lesson two, people. Dead down wind like this, you want a cruising chute or you want to put a I've got one. Run. I've got a cruising chute. Yeah, in the loft. Yeah. It's the loft of your house. Well, it kept tripping over. We're going to have to dive now because uh, we're going to run out of water. So someone okay. is going to have to do something. Okay, that's all for now. We very nearly broke. I, I forgot I was in. I was in charge of the main sheet. Completely my fault. Well, six knots. Six knots over the ground. Richard's a bit shell shocked. <laughs> uh, Ricky's lack of instruction. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> an example. God. Flags all knotted. I'm having a great time. <laughs> He's got a knotty flag, whatever that is. <laughs> See a doctor about that. <laughs> it was fine until you came on board. Now what's missing? What do we what did we lose? <laughs> the will to live. <laughs> Still driving. Still. Three days later. Three days. He sounds fast. No idea how fast we're going. It feels fast against the tide. We're doing over four knots. Hang on. Yeah, 4.2 knots. But we're going to jibe. We're not going to jibe. You're in danger of jibing. I am in danger of jibing, yeah. And we got no jibe preventer on. Gonna lose our heads. Because we don't need one. It's a proper boat. It's a proper Whoa. boat. Doesn't need one. Rick is trying to throw me overboard again. Richard has this rule that the helm have to do the main sheet, which is a lot of work when you're driving. Don't tack. Because I'm going forward. I'm not going to tack. I'm not going to tack. Um, but we got into a bit of a kerfuffle because he was trying to do the uh, the Genoa sheets and punched me in the face with his elbow. Nearly lost my sunglasses <laughs> as I was trying to let go of the main sheet. And now he's doing a dance on the deck for some that reason. Mess. Apparently, it's my mess, and the Genoa sheets are in a disordered array. But we're tacking now, and I pointed out, I pointed out to him that we're tacking as helm. I don't have to do anything with the main sheet. I could just leave it. I don't know who has to do the traveller. He hasn't told me that yet. That's your job. Richard. Yeah. It's not. He keeps his theory. So I have to finish the I was just trying to help you out. You were supposed to have pulled that sheet in. Richard, do you want to know how shallow we got before? <laughs> you were you were the one that was worried about squashing things in your pocket, not being ready with the sheets. I was ready to tack. What would the depth alarm have been set to? I would have gone off ages ago. <laughs> He's gone to check. He's going to put the depth alarm on. He doesn't trust me anymore. <laughs> Look at his hair. He was shock of white now, but he was he was dark haired when we left the marina. Squash my cigarettes. <laughs> Spill my water. My hair's all over the place. I'm not saying um, that I've done a bad job, but I have been replaced quite quickly by um, another member of the crew. It's less stressful. The autopilot is now uh, taking charge. Skipper's... And, and the doors haven't slammed once. Yeah, and his cushions haven't fallen over. He's a lot happier now. Some say friendships can be made or broken when you're sailing with a friend who's also a skipper, but we've really forged new ties and 
I really think we strengthened the friendship. It's clarified we do actually dislike each other. Horrible man. There's a nice little McGregor. A friend of mine. John, who's appeared in one of our other videos when we nearly crashed into him when he was at anchor. Put the full sail away so we can have a beer in a minute. It's getting too much work. It's very stressful. <laughs> Says it's stressful. It's my boat and I'm doing all the work. Whinge, whinge, whinge. I just want to outline some of the added features of the cabin. So coming search of beer, uh, I found this is a fridge and this is really really neat this little system here it, it holds it up and then you just push that to pull to release and you can close it but it keeps it up another neat feature is the level for the fuel gauge is in here that's that there in the heads and this is where the batteries are quite cleverly tucked away under the steps. Which I quite like, it's quite smart. Yeah, the storage is amazing actually. I mean, that goes, that, yeah. Okay. A lot of depth. Under both beds. Very important, where do you put your wine? Loads of space in there. There's a bottle of, looks like some rum that Richard's already drunk. That was before he went out with me. I needed it. <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed it. Oh, I got that on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Boat beer reviews. So what it's is not that? your Italian heritage, which you don't speak Italian, by the way. Si, uh, uh, Ferrari, Tortellini, well. Lamborghini, so don't tell Bira that, thank Moretti. <sighs> Thankfully, Jess is coming soon to take it away. Is that a good beer? I like it. It's one of my favourites. Very drinkable. What's not to like? It's not too strong. Well, actually, it's 4.6. Is that strong? No. Oh, okay. That's all right then. Please enjoy responsibly, Ricky. He's yeah, while broaching. <laughs> Please enjoy while broaching. <laughs> Grazie mille. <laughs> what caused the broach? The beer or your helmsmanship? It wasn't the helming, because I think the helming was spot on. I think it was something to do with the... Um, you not controlling the, the, main, the sheet. main sheet. which I'd forgotten that I was responsible for because it was only the second time we jived since we left the marina no I think no, basically it was you not controlling the, the, the one key thing that you were supposed to control that put our lives at risk I refute all of these claims really hope you enjoyed this video we had a lot of fun making it if sailing summer breeze makes you feel fine then tap to subscribe